How quickly do you think a company uses its data to enhance business operations? Minutes, hours, days or months following the data's creation? Now, the speed at which consumers conduct transactions nowadays in our world is accelerating. And in order to utilize data to make faster business decisions and gain a competitive advantage, the data should be of high availability. Now, to effectively utilize this data, companies need to move data from multiple isolated systems or servers to large data stores for cumulative reporting and analytic purposes. And this is where data replication helps. Data replication techniques ensure fast, reliable data access to the users who rely on it to make decisions and the customers who need it to perform transactions. On that note, hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. Welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel and in today's session, we'll be discussing about MongoDB replication. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. So first let us understand what is MongoDB replication. Now the database replication is the process of copying data from a database in one server to a database in another one ensuring that the same data is available on more than one MongoDB server. Now the main purpose of replication is high availability and data redundancy. Now data is kept durable by having several copies or replicas stored on physically separate servers. Now replication is that process of generating redundant data in order to integrate and protect data accessibility and durability. Now by generating multiple copies of your data across servers, replication enables you to increase data availability. This is especially helpful if a server fails or your service is interrupted or if there are any hardware failure issues. Now if your data is only stored in a single database, any of these events would make data access impossible. So if there is any breakage or failure of system or server failure, in that case you need a recovery and backup option. However, thanks to replication, your application can remain operational even if your database server fails while also providing disaster recovery and backup options as well. So that is what MongoDB replication is all about. Now why we need replication in MongoDB? Now there are various factors that we can take into account on why we need replication but these are the main reasons uh, why we need replication. Now the first one is replication provides high availability of data. Now as discussed earlier, the main purpose of replication is to provide high availability and data redundancy by storing the data in multiple server rather than one. Now this data is available 24 by 7 to the user even if there are any issues with the uh, you know server side or any database uh, failure as well. Now it also protects from any single server loss or hardware failures and service interruptions. So now data replication is must to keep your data protected right. So it ensures not only the high availability of data but also the ease of access especially in the event of any unexpected errors such as, such as a system crash, hardware or software based errors and etc. And finally replication ensures that data is always available to every client. Now no matter the problem is the re what replication it does is it basically shifts the data into multiple uh, servers or multiple locations wherein the data can be available in each of any server that is present in the database rather than only a single server side where the data is stored. So let us now understand how does replication work in MongoDB. Now this diagram of MongoDB replication is shown in the uh, image which I guess you guys are visible where a client application always communicates with the primary node and the primary node replicates the data to the multiple secondary nodes here. So we have a client application uh, wherein the data that is being read and write operations are taking place from MongoDB server and the driver as well. And we have a primary server here which basically does only write operation, write and read operation both as well. And then from there it creates a replication of the same database server into a secondary server. Now when I talk about server here we have different nodes. Now replication you know is done through a replica, a replica set process which in simple words it's a group of MongoDB process to keep the same data across different servers. Now we'll be discussing what replicate set is in a while. So but a replicate set basically must have certain number of nodes. Now as you can see in the right side of the image we have various multiple nodes that is servers 
Now, in that we we need at least one primary server in order to perform replication on the data that is present in our database. The rest all can be secondary data. Now, a replica set must have three nodes at least. Now, one of them must be primary and the rest secondary ones. A replication structure can have up to almost 50 nodes. So let us now understand what is replicate set that we have been talking about. Now MongoDB manages replication using replica sets which are a collection of related MongoDB nodes. Now a replica set requires a minimum of basically three MongoDB nodes that I have discussed earlier. One of which should be considered as the primary node that receives all the right operations. And on the other hand the, the rest of the remaining ones are considered as the secondary nodes which will replicate the data from the primary node. And if in case, if it, there is a failure at any level of, uh, you know, node structure or if, if there is any possibility of a failed node is recovered, it actually works as a secondary node again, but not as a primary node. So if you look at this diagram again here, now basically we have an application and then we have a primary node here, right? Now the primary uh, node is the member in which the replica set receives write and read operations. But read operations can be pointed out to secondary nodes as well, which changing uh, the con configuration at the moment to perform the query. Besides the replica set, uh, we can have only one uh, primary node at most as discussed earlier. And then the replication is done on the secondary node. So the secondary uh, node is where the data is replicated to maintain a copy. A replica set can have one or more secondary nodes here guys. So basically the clients cannot write data to secondary ones, only they can read from them. That is what a replicate set is all about. So let us just quickly recap what we have uh, covered here. Now to perform this, we need a minimum of three nodes, which is required. And in this operation of replication, MongoDB assumes one node as one, of, one node of the replicate set as the primary node and the remaining as the secondary node. So from within the primary node, data gets replicated to secondary node. And again, in case of any failure or any system error, the new primary nodes get elected in case there is an automatic maintenance or failover. Now, if you can see in the second diagram, we have an heart symbol here, guys, which is basically known as heartbeat mechanism. So each node is connected to all the other and a heartbeat mechanism is in place to call any other node. So the heartbeat has a configurable time for pinging the nodes and the default is 10 seconds. So if all the nodes respond with an acknowledge to the heartbeat, the cluster or the server, the, the nodes where the, the nodes are present, it continues to work. And if one of the nodes crashes, the primary node, for example, an election takes place involving the remaining nodes. And when a secondary, does, a secondary node doesn't receive a response to the heartbeats after the configure timeout, it calls for an election. So this takes place until the primary node which has been uh, failed is recovered. So next let us discuss what are some of the benefits of replication. Now as discussed earlier, replication helps in disaster recovery and backup of data. It basically improves application reliability. Now uh, by spreading your data across multiple machines, you can ensure that your application's data continues to be available even in the event of any hardware failure on any given machine or server in the replication group. It also, uh, the replication also minimizes downtime for maintenance. Now, since we are, uh, you know, transferring or locating our data into various multiple servers, it basically minimizes the downtime for maintenance also. And we can also achieve load balancing as well using replication. We know that MongoDB works on a lot of unstructured data and it keeps on piling up on and on. So if a, let's say if a user is working on one of the database and which is having a particular server to its name, while a lot of people also can work on the same server. So that can cause, you know, a breakage or failure sometimes. So in order to achieve that load balance, you know, to handle number of people and number of people that are working on the same database, we can basically replicate the data that is present in our database to different servers and from which we can eventually achieve load balancing. Now, on the other side, we have certain limitations as well with the usage of replication also. Some of them are higher costs and time constraints. Now, maintaining consistent data across, you know, disparate or various locations is often taxing in terms of resources. Now, if you maintain duplicates of the same data in various locations and distributed database systems, which results in great, greater storage as well as processing uh, costs as well, which 
ultimately results in time constraints while executing and handling the duplication process, which needs committed time from an in-house team or a people that are working on that database to ensure that the copy data is consistent with the source data. That is, all the data that is being copied from the primary node is actually same as that is being copied into the secondary node. And finally, redundant data is being stored in the secondary uh, server or secondary node, right? So it basically takes more space and server processing is also required, which takes a lot of time. So those were some of the limitations or you can say disadvantages of a replication in MongoDB. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. Uh, so let us just quickly recap what we have discussed in the uh, today's session. Now, MongoDB replication is one of an important process which makes data available across multiple data servers. So instead of just store, uh, storing a data at a one particular site, you can basically shift it to across multiple data storage locations. Now data redundancy and uh, availability and load balancing are one of the important factors that we've discussed in replication, which are important, you know, for maintaining such a huge uh, database, you know, data that is being constantly changing and ever evolving. MongoDB also supports replication with the help of replica sets. As discussed, uh, replica sets are basically a combination of various MongoDB instances, each having a single primary node and multiple secondary node. Now, this process is done on a keyword that is heartbeat mechanism, which is a method of finding out the current state of the MongoDB node in a replica set. Now, the heartbeat signal basically matches or verifies whether the data is being generated in the primary node and it is further uh, displacing into the secondary node. So replicate set selection is used to find out which MongoDB node should be the primary node. And finally, we talk about scalability, performance and high availability, which are the paramount uh, factors in uh, MongoDB replication. Now, when I talk about scalability, guys, uh, scalability as the data volume increases, the complexity of accessing data and working with data also increases. So we, replication in place, multiple data copies are available, allowing users to not only increase their data, but also recover any previous version in case of any errors or failure. Performance is also very important when you're replicating certain data. Now, when data which is available across multiple servers, it not, it not only makes accessing data easier, but makes recovering from unexpected and sudden failures much easier. So replication uh, basically ensures data availability and security all the time. So with replication in place, there's no need to worry about data failures. Your data is, you know, safely stored in other locations. So in situations where your primary source of data fails, you can e easily access the same up-to-date data from a secondary reserve or the data that is stored in secondary server which highly promotes data availability and which is another 